is a special edition of the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching out there. This is a web exclusive because we are starting our new college football edition of the Suburban Ford 7 Sports Cave. I'm Brad Galley, Michigan State, former athlete, star, now Superman built, Keith Nickel, <laughs> and Matt Derry from 105.1 uh, here on the couch. We're talking college football now at 1030 on Sunday mornings inside the cave and uh, guys it's good to have you with us here in this new format new time. Brad I really like the white pants uh, you've, 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 you've completely uh, you've, you have done yourself today but uh, I guess you, as you told me before the show it's the only time now you can wear these because after September you, you're not supposed to be wearing that. Labor so. Day's the rule right? Yeah that's the rule. You got all the style, man. <laughs> he does. Uh, you've joined us, Keith, before on 7 Action News Saturday games. You'll sit there in the studio with David Solano, talk with him, uh, wrapping games up. What's your feel about joining us here on Sunday mornings? I'm excited about it, man. I'm really uh, excited about talking about Michigan State and college football in general. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to dive into the Spartans, to the Wolverines. We're going to talk about a lot. Uh, and the reason we're doing this web exclusive is because on 1030 Sunday mornings inside the cave, uh, we're showing highlights. We're going to break down film. We will be uh, looking at game footage, calling Matt, calling Keith last night, talking about what plays they want to break down, what they're looking at, what they saw. So that's what you have to look forward to on this part of what we're going to do. We're going to kind of talk about the games and what we saw. We'll start with Michigan State because they're the eighth best team in the nation, at least according to the polls. Wow. Yeah. You've just upset about 60% of the audience. <laughs> How did you start with Sparty? Ooh. We're going through it and we're like, okay, where do we start? Do we start with Michigan, Michigan State? Well, let's put the number in front. That's what we would go wow. with. Uh, Gutsy move. That was our choice. I didn't go to either school. You didn't go to either school. <laughs> Keith, you went to Michigan State. You were at the game Friday night. Yeah. Your biggest takeaway from a game that turned out to be a blowout with about two minutes into the thing. Yeah, my biggest thing was looking at the progression of the wide receivers and the way they've moved along. And, of course, I'm a little biased because that's the position I played uh, for three years. But if you look at a year ago where they were at, they maybe didn't have three receivers that they felt confident in. And now they have seven that I saw that could go out and legitimately play and start. Uh, not only at Michigan State, but at a, a lot of schools. And the progression of Tony Lippett and Keith Mumphrey, and then you see guys like A.J. Troop, who was a walk-on, and the way he's come along. And they have liked him for a long time, but the kid was uh, injured a little bit through his career. And uh, there's a lot of guys that can play. So, you know, of course, it, the defense was tenacious as ever. They got after him. Uh, young uh, Malik McDowell from Southfield yeah. was playing well. And uh, Shalit Calhoun, those guys, Curtis Drummond always has a knack to get to the ball. So they were, they were what they were, and they're always going to be that way as long as uh, Pat Narduzzi is a uh, defensive coordinator. But I really like the progression of the wide receivers and even the swagger from Connor Cook knowing that he's you know, the man, he's the starter. It was just night and day from last year because at this point we didn't know if you'd come back and be the quarterback, if Matt was going to be the quarterback. I mean, we really had no idea who was going to step up and be the guy. <laughs> Connor's really stepped up the swagger. That's the word yeah. he says. Matt, you see it. No, I, I mean, look, I, I don't want to throw a bucket of cold water, uh, and I know that's been a hot topic and a hot thing the last few weeks with the ALS challenge. I don't want to put a, uh, I don't want to throw that on the, this discussion with Michigan and Michigan State, but those two games that were played uh, Friday night and then yesterday uh, were exhibition games, in my opinion. I, I really didn't learn that much. With that being said, Keith's right. I mean, you look at Connor Cook from a year ago, it was – a three-headed monster quarterback and, 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 and D'Antonio's uh, uh, farcical move at Notre Dame to put Maxwell into a game at the end that was ridiculous, and it was rock bottom. Now, all of a sudden, this is a legitimate national t championship contender based on the fact that Cook just has this moxie about him. They're already a very physical team to begin with. The identity there is crazy good. Even in the first quarter of a game against you know, a high school team that they were playing Friday night, <laughs> they still, you still watch and say, wow, they're so physical. They stand over you, but they can. They can thump their chest out. Michigan State, and Keith knows this, Michigan State in the past trash talking and calling Michigan players out and then going and getting blitzed by them, that's over. They talk and back it up. And still, even in a game like that against a subpar team, they still show that physicality and that identity. You know, Ed Davis flying around the ball. It's crazy. It's good. It's going to be scary how good they are. And again, this coming Saturday against Oregon, that's going to be a great test. And that'll be a real game to watch. That's it. That is a real game. And that's the real litmus test for this team earlier in the season. If they get that win and they snowball into the Big Ten season, the sky's the limit. National championship, that's a legitimate contention point of view. What do you see as the biggest keys against an Oregon team that you know that offense is widespread, you know they're going to do a lot of different things. Yeah. It's that imposing defense for Michigan State that Matt's talking about that we all know against this great Oregon offense. You know, I think the first thing that the defense is going to have to do is establish their will on uh, Oregon's offense. I think 
they are going to do a lot of different things and be tricky. But I think as long as the defensive line uh, stays home, does their assignments, the linebackers just stay within themselves and the, and the DBs just do their job and stay consistent the entire game. I think it's Michigan State's game, honestly, because I think they're going to be able to impose their will and the defense is going to come out and thump their chest, like you said. And you've seen in the past when Oregon is kind of you know, beat up physically, that that's not a game that, they, that is ideal for them. They want to get outside on teams and use their speed. But when teams stick around and kind of beat them up physically, that's when they do not perform as well. So hopefully if Michigan State can do that and, and Connor comes out and executes, it's really going to come down to who can execute consistently for four quarters. Sometimes that response, no offense, gets cliche, but as you're sitting there explaining it, impose your will, it's so true. We've seen Oregon go into big time games, big time settings, and everyone says, this is the team that's for real, and they play a physical team, Matt, and they, and they fall apart. Here's the thing that Mark D'Antonio should do, and I know they did this Friday night, so they do the opposite. You win the coin toss, get the ball. Last week it was, we'll kick, and we'll put our defense on the field, fire up the crowd, and, and do our thing with the defense. Get the ball this time and score first. Because Oregon will look up and go, man, we're losing 3 nothing, or we're down 7 nothing. They're never behind. They always seem to go up 14 nothing. They can be scored on, Oregon. Everybody talks about Mariota and running backs come out of the backfield and run those wheel routes. and They're going to put up some points. Michigan State's going to give up some points. But I'd love to see MSU get the ball first and score and go, all right, Oregon, now it's your turn. Now, maybe they'd come down and score. They're that good. Like I said, Mariota's a Heisman candidate. But I would love to see MSU go up and take the lead and put the pressure on, uh, on the guys from Eugene right off the bat. I think that'd be great. Yeah, without a doubt. I think that game is one we'll all be watching. And college game day announcing late Saturday night they will be in Eugene, Oregon for that game. So fun little added bonus for Michigan State fans. I'm sure that'll be fun for Desmond Howard. I'm sure he'll Oh, he'll that. love that. He really yeah. enjoys that. Yeah. Michigan State, Oregon. Hmm, <laughs> Let's uh, switch gears here and get, <laughs> and get to Michigan a little bit and talk about what they were able to do. That is an exhibition game, Matt, as you said, against a team like Appalachian State that they did lose to. This was night and day, a completely different situation, completely different team. They knew what they were getting themselves into this yeah, time. Yeah, look, this, you know, they, they, exacting revenge from 07, I Please. think it's a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. I mean, that was one of the worst losses of, you know, of all time and will never be exacted. But with that being said, did Michigan look a lot better? Yes. And do they appear to have uh, filled some holes? They just look like they have more talent on the field. There was more talent on the defensive line. There's more talent on the offensive line. Uh, you know, Taylor Lewan, the greatest left tackle in the history of football. Sorry, not a leader. <laughs> right. It looks like that line plays together. No matter if there's a freshman left tackle there or not, they seem to, you know, have some cohesion there. Uh, if they can run the football like they did um, the rest of the year, that was a huge thing they could not do last year. But again, Appalachian State was pathetic. And Michigan a year ago in week one beat Central 59-9. to And then that was supposedly a bad year. So... They always seem to win in September. Yeah. The question is what they're going to do this Saturday at Notre Dame. Do you know Devin Funches is wearing number one now? Oh. Did you catch that? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, from your position, and you can see what he can do, he is a physical specimen. Yeah. Uh, three touchdowns off the bat for him. I don't think it's ever been done in an opener. He's good. He's yeah. very good. <laughs> He's real Bottom good. line, that's the best player on that team. Yeah. What impresses you most about him? Well, he has a great combination of size and speed. The kid can't be covered by a safety and he can run with corners and he's 235 pounds I think 6'5 if I have his profile yeah. right yeah. I mean I don't know a position that can say consistently they're going to cover the kid so he's going to create uh, mismatch nightmares for teams all year it's just going to be a matter of you know picking your poison and how is he going to beat you and containing him as much as you can the kid is going to score touchdowns he's going to make big plays but not allowing him to beat you over and over and over that's going to be the consistent uh, theme I think for a lot of uh, defenses so He's just, I mean, he's just bigger and faster than everybody else. It's, it is what it is. What does he do for their offense? I mean, having him there behind an offensive line that's still so young, that's still so unproven, that last year was so bad. Yeah. What does he do for the running game? What does he do to open things up for them? Well, I mean, he spreads the defense wide. I mean, he's going to constantly open up holes for the, the running backs. He's going to constantly spread out the linebackers and, and scare them and bring safeties down on top of them. So. He does. He opens up everything. He's a he's a game changer. It's night and day when he's on and off the field. Yeah. So he, like you said, he's the best player on the team, um, and he's going to constantly create uh, nightmares for the defense. Matt, you've talked on this show before about the jazzed up number celebrations. The yeah, I hate it. Yeah, is this Michigan team? Uh, the first thing they do before they even start the season is he's wearing number one. 
Did you see any signs yesterday, even though you called it an exhibition game, that this could be a Michigan team that's different than what we've seen the past year and a half, two years? No, I, I do. I mean, I, 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 like you said, I'm bothered by the gimmicks, and I guess he wanted to wear number one, so they allowed it for him. I think he's going to be that good that he deserves to wear it. I, I really don't have a problem with that. If he has to wear it and he can back it up, I have a problem with anybody wearing number two. You know, Blake Countess was even on the field yesterday. I mean, he's fine. He's a good cornerback, but he shouldn't be wearing Charles Woodson's number. Funchess looks like a guy that should be wearing yeah. Derek Alexander's number, Braylon Edwards' number. So from that standpoint, he's just, he's that good. And I've not seen, you know, he's trimmed down. He doesn't have the tight end body anymore, but he seems to be even stronger, if that's possible. Uh, I don't know why he was running free in the secondary, and it's, I think it was the second touchdown. It wasn't even covered, which shows about the, uh, the opposition yeah. that they were playing. Yeah. But I think that they have more talent on the field. You just see it. Like I said before, Jabril Peppers is a talented kid. Brady Hoke put him out there. He was out there in the first play of the game. Instead of saying, well, it's the Michigan way of, you know, we're going to ease guys in. You know, No, if Cole is good enough as a true freshman, play him. It's desperation time. It's time for them to be Michigan again. This talk of, well, we'll, we'll sneak in. And maybe we'll sneak in in the East. No, go win the East. You're, you're Michigan. You haven't won the, the yeah. Big Ten. And, you know, this talk of, well, you know, it's a, it's a quiet team that might make some noise. They should be making noise. They have all these very good players. So yeah. play them and win games. You're going to get a ton of calls this week on the Tigers like you do every day. You're going to get a ton of calls about the Lions. Will people be genuinely fired up for Michigan-Notre Dame, you think? I would hope so. Um, but again, I think that I think people are, after one game, like I said, last year it was Central. They should beat up on Central. Yesterday was Appalachian State. But there is something to having a fifth-year senior quarterback, having, um, like I said, Funchess being good. The running backs appear, Derek Green appears to be in better shape than a year ago. And uh, Smith was, was good. So uh, I think there should be some, some excitement, but it's, it's time to win. There should be excitement every year. I think last year was just such a downer when you lose six games. And yeah. the, the taste in their mouth at the end of the season, getting beat up by MSU, uh, going into that you know, bad bowl game that doesn't even exist anymore, <laughs> Buffalo <laughs> Wild Wings Bowl, and, and losing to a, you know, a subpar Kansas State team and getting embarrassed. Um, I think that you could see Michigan's playing a little bit of chip on their shoulder. Good for them. Yeah. Well, guys, thanks for joining us inside the cave. 1030, every Sunday morning, we're going to be breaking down college football. Braylon Edwards is going to be a part of our team this week, uh, or this season. We're excited about that. Excited to have Keith with us here. Uh, you can catch all the action right here online. You can catch it on Channel 7. It's all happening in the cave Sunday mornings at 1030. We precede Lions Game Day Live at 11 a.m., a very fun football-packed Sunday morning And white pants. White pants. No, that's the last time you'll see them. Oh, come on. I gotta head to Franklin Cider Mill. I gotta get some donuts, baby. <laughs> Cider season. Thanks for watching.